Hey everyone. Um, I don't normally do ads in my videos, but I'm gonna do one real quick. It's just for serverbuilds.net. Um, this is our second run of apparel, and um, it's a very simple design, but uh, I picked out some warmer and more comfy clothes for this run. Um, so it's just gonna be our, like our winter collection, and it's uh, it's been running for a little while now this says november 4th it's actually going to close this weekend uh, i believe on the 11th so ignore that um, but if you just go to the website serverbuilds.net it's right on the front page um, if you buy anything it helps me a little bit i really don't make a whole lot of money on this um, i try to keep the prices as low as possible just to um i don't know i guess get them out there more uh, but the last round turned out really really well uh, the printing was great the Clothes quality, they're super great, uh, very soft and very durable. They use really high quality stuff at Bonfire, so really happy with that. Um, and it'll just take you here and you can order through here if you want. And if you do end up uh, if you do end up making an order, let me know. Send an email to contact at serverbuilds.net. I'll send you some stickers in the mail. And yeah, so I appreciate it if you do that. Um, and that's all for that, so on to the video. So we're going to talk about building a DAS. And actually, if I go back to the website here, if you go to the builds and you go to the 16 bay DAS expansion. So I've talked about this before, and the idea with a DAS is that you, uh, you can expand the amount of available hard drive slots on an existing server or NAS, and um, it's pretty OS agnostic. Anything that will accept a LSI card with IT mode, this will work. Um, so the original guide is a 16 bay 4U DAS expansion, and uh, that's using the Rosewell 14, or sorry, Rosewell 4U 15 bay. Um, so this is a very large 4U DAS. Um, it's not too expensive considering the other options that are out there. Um, if you're looking at a 16 bay Supermicro 3U, you're looking probably around the same price for a JBOD. Um, and this is this is doing it what I would call the correct way, which means that you're getting the adapters and everything, where if you just do the cables, it's a little bit easier. Um, this guide's pretty barren and I haven't updated it in a while. But again, all the information's out there. Uh, we have a channel in the Discord for it and a lot of people have bought this, uh, or not just bought it, but built it. Um, so if you go actually to the forum, um, do it myself too, a user, has created a very, very lovely DAS and uh, this is what it looks like. So that's using the Rosewell uh, 15 bay, and he's added another one, so he's gone to 20 bays. Uh, very nice cable management and everything like that. So DASs are super sweet, very easy way and very clean way to add storage to your system. Um, in this video in particular, we're gonna talk about the eight bay uh, little DAS. I mean, it's just a little unit and it comes all contained. Um, I f someone showed this to me. I don't recall who was the original person that showed this to me. It was from the seller. They don't sell a whole lot of stuff. They sell this thing. I can't find this anywhere else on the internet. Um, but it's a neat little case. And it's smaller than micro ATX. It's definitely smaller than ATX. It's not quite mini ITX size, but uh, I think it, it's just eight drives stacked vertically. Um, so here's what the front looks like. There's a power button, a couple drive status LEDs. Here's the side, you got a 120 millimeter fan in the back, very basic 300 watt power supply, uh, breakout board down here that allows it to turn on and off with the front panel buttons. Um, that's all it does. There's no motherboard tray, nothing like that. There's two cutouts at the back for, oh gosh, someone, someone said they're like a standard size. I forget what size they are, but 
Uh, it's just for cables to go through. And then you have eight hard drive bays and you just slide them in and then you can connect them. So it's very, very simple. It's very, very cheap, which is, I mean, it's just perfect. Like if you want to add eight bays, eight bays is a lot. Uh, it's 50 bucks and I think they just charge 35 shipping standard, but um, I believe they will accept around 40 on best offer. So try that, maybe try 35. Um, I don't think they're selling a whole lot of these because it just really comes and goes on eBay. They had, I think three in the initial one and then months went by, didn't see anything. Someone said, hey, these came back. I was like, oh, cool. And then I think they had like six. And then um, I contacted the seller and I was like, look, I could probably point a lot of people in the direction of this and say, you know, it'd be really popular. Like, do you have an ability to like get any serious quantity of this? Like, where are you getting them? And the seller just responded and said, uh, we don't have the ability to get any quantity of them. Um, we'll just list them as we get them. And that was it. And they just like didn't contact me any further. So I was like, all right, whatever. Uh, and then like another two weeks went by and then now it says more than 10 available. So I don't know if they're like listening to what I had to say about it or I don't know what's going on. Um, but I did pick one of these up. I will be doing a physical video on this. This is just me talking uh, in this video. So I do have a guide and I will obviously that will be linked in the description below. It's a mini DAS mini guide. So not a whole lot to say here. Um, like I said, this thing has always been forty nine ninety five OBO. Um, I don't remember who the first person was, but Spike Bite said it came back, and then Surge the Raichu said it came back again, which is where we're at now. Um, really, all you need is a LSI SAS external card, and thankfully those are very cheap for the 16 port, so you're only going to use half of that. You're going to use two cables, four drives per cable, eight drives total, and that means that you can hook up another one of these to the same card, and then you have 16 drives, so you'll have your main NAS and two 8-bay uh, DASs if you want. Um, so that's pretty cool. You can just use one card or you know half a card for it, and those are very, very cheap. The 921-16E is an IT mode only um, external SAS card. And, oh wow, uh, 2490. So it's even cheaper than what I have listed in the guide, so I'll probably update that. Um, and then here are the cables you need. You need, I link the two meter ones because I don't know, you know, maybe your NASA is going in the very bottom of the rack and then the DASs are gonna go on the top or something like that. The extra cable length is not gonna hurt you. You can wrap it up and cable tie it if you want. It's only like, a few, what, 50 cents more for another three feet of cable. Uh, I would probably just recommend that. So go for the two meter cables. You need two of them. These plug right into the back of the, right in the, in the back of the LSI card. These SATA cables plug right into your SATA drives. Now, that's assuming you're using SATA drives. If you are going to use SAS drives, you need a slightly more expensive cable. It's the same style cable, plugs into the LSI, and then this is an 8482 cable, um, and that will work with SATA or SAS drives, but then you need to find somewhere to provide power with these Molex connectors. You can use a Molex splitter, it doesn't really matter. That power supply should be able to handle eight drives just fine. Um, so just something to consider. Um, I'm assuming that most of you will be using SATA drives. So again, all you need is this cable here and it's a little bit cheaper anyway. So get two of those per four drives that you're gonna be running. And then I would highly recommend replacing whatever junk fan this 120 is in the back with an Arctic P12. P12s are very quiet, very reliable, and they move a good amount of air and they they have very good static pressure. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Um, 
and then uh, I have the um, SATA power cable. I think that's an optional component. Um, I'm not really sure what the connectors come with on this power supply, so I will open it up, see exactly everything it needs. I have the SAS cables and the external SAS card already. Um, I'm not sure about the SATA power cables and all that, so we'll figure that out probably this weekend. I'll, I'll sh shoot the video. I don't know if it'll come out until next week or something like that, but uh, I'll make sure to get that video out there. And um, yeah, so there's really not a whole lot to say about this guy. It's very cool. Um, I'm very excited to work, work with it and uh, very excited to use it. Um, I guess the only thing I wanted to say about the LSI SAS is it is IT mode only, which is initiator target mode, means that it passes the drives directly to the host OS or whatever software you're running. Um, so it basically just doesn't interfere at all. It just allows them to connect. Now, there's different firmwares in IT mode. There's, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know how far they go back, but like P12 is like an old version, P16. P20 is the most current version, so you want to make sure that that SAS card is running P20. You don't have to reflash the entire card. You can just update it to P20. It's a much simpler process, but either way, double check. There's no reason not to run P20. Um, so go ahead and do that with your SAS card. It's super simple. Um, I think you can e actually do it from Windows too with like the Mega Rec uh, software tool. So again, um, really just, you know, you need the case, you need the SAS card, maybe you already have it already, um, a couple cables and a fan. And you're looking at like maybe a little over a hundred bucks, 150 bucks for eight drives. And someone commented earlier that, uh, where's my tab here? Um, you know, building a full 16 bay or 15 bay is, um, you know, around, so like 16 bays, let's say with the fans and everything is 311 bucks. So eight bays is probably half that. And it's the same cost per bay, but with a 16 bay of this for you, you are you are committing to some serious size. Um, so there's there's something to consider there. The if you don't have rack, you might not be able to do that for you at least as conveniently. Just you know, form factor does does matter to a lot of people. Um, so maybe the eight bay is all you need. Um, so just just consider that, but. It is nice to have another option for a DAS, and um, hopefully you like this. Um, hopefully you check out the video uh, when I actually put one of these together. So I have I have a NAS Killer 4 here that's in a Cooler Master N400 case, and that's uh, native capacity eight drives. I can add two more if I use bay adapters. Um, I've got uh, eight four terabyte reds in it right now and I have another geez I have a lot of drives um, just around and I'd like to hook that up to this DAS just to demonstrate just to show you how it works um, how like you know turn the DAS on first then turn your NAS on and when you turn the NAS off then you turn the DAS off after that things like that just you know how to use it what to expect, what the size looks like, working with it, you know, what cables you need, all that stuff. So look for that video coming soon. Um, thanks for sticking with me for this video, and I'll see you guys soon.